Bloody the hell, where the fuck do I begin? First of all, I think the camera's frosty. Oh my god, there you go, look at that. It's so warm outside, that it's frosty. So, so, in three weeks since the surgery, and I haven't done a YouTube video yet because, basically, because the pain was so fucking ridiculous in the last maybe first 14 days that it was such, such a tough slog to come through. Um, there was lots and lots of sleepless nights, a lot of pain medication, a lot of crying to be honest, and um, a lot of trying to move this leg without there being that much of uh, success. But it really did turn a corner maybe five, six days ago. The pain meds increased and then also I was able to start moving it more. Uh, the bandages came off, so the, the stitches came out, uh, the clips came out and um, was finally back on the men. So I wanted to kind of jump straight back onto YouTube and continue on the process of vlogging, this rehabilitation process. Uh, and this is obviously step number three. Um, this will be all about, well, effectively night, the comeback. The comeback is on. So we're kind of going back into the gym now, doing some bits and bobs downstairs in the apartment gym. Um, and we are also, fucking hell, look at the fog. It's still steaming up. Um, we are doing some stuff in the pool, so I'm going to be filming that today. Uh, but overall, it's just been a very, very difficult uh, first 14 days and getting better now. But I want to go into the detail of what I'll be doing in terms of my next rehabilitation phase, what the goals are and how I'll be going after it. And I'll take you through that stuff once I've uh, done my pool um, session. So I'm going to go and do the pool stuff now. It won't be long. I don't really take that much time in the pool yet. It's only my second session in, that, in, in the pool. So it's very much slow and steady wins the race. Uh, and it is a nice way to start the morning also because it's... Uh, it's 8 o'clock here in the morning, it's probably about 35 degrees, it's fucking ridiculously warm and, and as you can tell from the, the, uh, the camera fogging up, it's a, it's a really humid day today so I need to get in there, get you refreshed and, um, and then get, you, get on with the rest of the day. Today is a Sunday which means that it's a day of uh, writing content, uh, planning for the week ahead, uh, recording YouTube, uh, YouTube and Instagram videos and just doing a lot and lot of stuff on the business as opposed to in the business. So I love these type of days, these are my favourite days uh, and we're just going to go and uh, attack it and uh, have a really nice day. So let's get on with the pool session.
was all going hunky dory for about two days after post surgery. So when you see in the last video, I was buzzing, I was like walking, I was having a great time. And then I got home and it was only at that kind of those moments, maybe two days later, where I was like, holy fuck, I was on so much pain meds when I was walking at that moment in time. Um, the whole of my leg basically swelled up to three times the size. I had bruising all the way down from my heel all the way up to like my scrotum. And it was all, all blue, all black and blue. And it looked like I'd been like, beaten up effectively and at that moment that's when the pain started subsequently coming back obviously they'd use all different local anaesthetics and a lot of different uh, pain meds which meant that over time each one because they have different esters and how long they last they were um it was incrementally getting pain more painful and more painful and more painful and the tramadol wasn't really touching the sides i was going to bed and then waking up like one or two hours later and then i'd have to go through the whole process all, all the way through so I was waking up, icing my leg, painkillers, just repeating that process to the point where I wasn't really getting any sleep. For 12 days I think you know I just really got my head stuck into work because I was like in so much pain I just needed like a distraction so I was kind of working doing some bits and bobs but not leaving the house just literally going through this same cycle every single day of like getting up at like 4, 4.30 because I had enough uh, icing my leg, doing some work, sitting down, being in pain, going through the whole motions of things, getting to 11 o'clock, going to bed, waking up at 1, 2, 3, 4, going to, getting up and doing the whole cycle again. And it was both, you know, mentally, physically and emotionally attacking for both me and Millie. Me, Millie was looking after me and like, a, I think two days, three days afterwards, like, there was one point in which like, I just sort of woke up in the middle of the night screaming. And at that point, like, I knew that it was, um, it was fucking on in terms of like the the rehab like the rehab and the, the kind of steps going forwards because it was difficult really really difficult so you know there's been a lot a lot of tears there's been a lot of pain and there's definitely been a lot of pain medication taken um, and you know those twelve days were fuck it, I would never ever forget them because they were just so difficult um, and they were just immensely immensely emotionally draining so it was a it was a very very difficult time and um, and that moment like then you know I started being able to move my I couldn't be able to move my leg a little bit more the pain was getting worse so I was moving my leg less so then there was more pain coming from the stiffness it was all like kind of wrapping up into one to the point where I got to the doctors and um, I went to see Paul and he was just like look if you don't move your leg we're gonna have to surgically go in and move it for you because of like we need to get the range of motion back and at that moment in time that's when I was like fuck this I'm not going for surgery again I'm not gonna kind of put myself in that scenario so I really really started pushing the pain meds and I started pushing the, the movement and the rehab uh, I, I reached out to my friend Rushab in the UK who directed me to a, to a physio in, in, in um, in, in UAE. Basically I went to go see him for one session it was really really good. It, it was um, a lot of movement based stuff, taking the, the, the knee through a range of motion and like giving me different exercises to do which alleviated the pain quite a bit and now I'm going to be like kind of weekly online checking in with Rushab uh, who I'll put his tag here below who's a phenomenal phenomenal guy and like we, we know that from the kind of rehab strategies that I've been given uh, the the way that they kind of discharged me, the way that I was walking straight afterwards, probably actually did, uh, really really hampered my ability to recover in those first two weeks. So, I'm not saying it was the wrong approach, but I'm saying that because I was walking straight away, I was loading the muscles, loading those areas, and it was becoming very very difficult to do any of the exercises because I was in so much pain. So, if I had my time again and I had the surgery again, I probably wouldn't be up and walking straight away. I would be moving, but not like to the extent I was. I was literally I walked out of the hospital with no no crutches, no zimmer frame, no nothing. So it was really, really difficult. Um, so, you know, it is, it, um, and now we're in a situation where I'm in the rehab phase and it's so nice to be here. It's so nice to be moving and moving my leg and having the ability to now like kind of have something to stick my teeth into when it comes to the rehabilitation process. So for me at the moment in time, we're focusing on two major key areas. One is, you know, the, the movement within the flexion and extension and then get strong within those ranges. The key is to get with knee replacements and any type of knee surgery is to get extension and get a full extension of the, the knee and then also make sure you get as much flexion as possible. The longer you leave this, the longer you don't have it for, the longer the stiffness of the joint creates, the scar tissue that you've got will actually like kind of 
scar tissue, a bit, uh, from my rehabilitation background, scar tissue has like three different uh, healing phases. It, like it, it, it's, when it's laid down, it's laid down really unorganized, so it just like kind of is just put down there to help uh, the healing process. Then over time, if you do it properly, the scar tissue will align in the direction in which you create force. So if you don't do that, so for example, if you don't create the scar tissue to move with the joint, it will just lay over in opposite directions and create stiffness and then you won't get the range of motion back. So that's why it's really important to get the range of motion back as fast as possible when the healing phases are in the younger stages. When they are later down the line and they're just stiff and they're crossed over when they're not supposed to be, you are going to have to work really, really hard, spend a lot of time. Like uh, collagen and scar tissue does rejuvenate over time but it's actually much easier to do it in the earlier phases than it would be to do it in six months time. So the goal is to get as much as much range of, po mo uh, range of motion as possible and to get as much strength through those, those ranges at the time as well. So it's a lot of closed chain exercises. So where we're reducing the instability of things. So it's not like single leg this or single leg that. It's closed chain exercises where my feet are firmly planted on the floor and I am the only moving through you know, one plane of motion, like for example, a squat, or like something like a like holding on to the, like to something else, stability lunges, which you'll see me doing the water today when I was just bobbing up and down. That was me doing squats and me doing lunges, so that I can actually move through the ranges where I've now got a bit of a block. So at 90 degrees, my knee is like really really stiff because of the scarring, and that's where kind of we're up to in terms of my flexibility. I have to now really test that and kind of push against it, so over time it eases out over time. So there's going to be that layer of like next next range of motion that is going to come through and over time as you go through those ranges you are getting more strong you are getting stronger within those ranges which is really really interesting so they're the two big factors hydrotherapy in terms of like my my movement side of things and then getting flexion and extension back is absolute priority so there's there's a few exercises that i'll be taking you through in, in like the next video that i'll be working towards but basically squatting some lunge variations uh, and you know my general just moving the, the flexion of, of the leg uh, and, and and just trying to keep it move mobile as possible. So it's it's really, really interesting to go down this route. Obviously my degree is in, in rehabilitation and injuries, but when you are, again, like in the fat loss phase, when you are a coach, even if you're a coach, you still find it difficult to coach yourself. So being able to have Rushab by my side, to be able to know what's going on and the mechanical side of things is really helpful. But still, when you're presented with pain, it's really hard to distinguish between you being like the educational brain and you just being the guy that's in, in pain and you don't want to be in pain. So it's hard to know when to push and when to pull because that's when you know you really do um, feel scared to, to push through it and, and, and do that. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very interesting, but we're, we're getting back there now and yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're moving in the right direction. So it's good. So I'm going to look at the scar. So the scar is now like, Kind of healed over slightly, so it's it, you know you've got the pink here, um, which means that it's going well. The knee is kind of turning back to a normal shape. The quads, well, I haven't really got any, but they they are contracting, which means that they are going to probably build over time. And yeah, it's a, it's a really decent look. So I'm glad that the scarring has come through really nicely um, because it would have been horrific if it would have been crap. So. Now that's it for today's YouTube. Just a small one from me, just having a bit of a catch up. We're on the not on that next home straight now in terms of rehabilitation. Um, you know, at the same time as uh, you know, I, I started dieting the day that I got out of surgery. So I'm now uh, five kilos down since I uh, have been um, in three weeks effectively. Uh, we've we've pulled pulled gear back down to cruise dose. So I was doing like 500 meg of uh, of Primo. Uh, 250 test uh, and, uh, and and growth hormone. We literally pulled it down to um, you know 125 test, and that's literally it. So uh, it's really really that bound down to basics and just cruising. Whilst I can't obviously train properly, um, five kilos, six kilos down, which is pretty cool. I was feeling definitely at that 82 range, a bit like oh fuck, I need to, I need to diet now. But um, I'm glad that I've been able to chalk a bit off and we'll continue doing this uh, you know, for a while. I'm only on like 2,000 calories because I'm not moving very much, but it seems to be working very well uh, and not too much of an effect. Outside of that, I've, uh, I've cancelled my UK trip. I was supposed to go back to the UK on, on Wednesday, but I'm just not going to be able to do that. Carrying a luggage suitcase all on my own across London to get to Wimbledon, from Dubai to London, to, to London, to go to Wimbledon, to then go home, to then come back to London, to then go to, to like a two-day two, two day event. It's just not going to be feasible. I don't want to put myself in jeopardy. So we're staying in Dubai. We'll probably end up getting a little bit of a break. 
uh, me and uh, Millie will go away for two days probably in a couple of weeks time just to kind of get some rest and recuperation um, because we've been stuck in the house for like you know, 20 days now apart from maybe once or twice gone out so um, yeah it's, uh, it's going to be well needed to have a rest and recuperation so apart from that guys have a great week. Bye.